Wowzers. Look at the weather we're getting this week. I'd almost swear Mother Nature knew we were installing a hydronic heater in the van. And this weather also means we have to run our shop heater now inside our shop again. Which seriously escalates the challenges for us to have a video together. But enough of my problems. Let's get straight into the van build because that's what you guys are here for. And today is all about this big box right here. And let me introduce to you our heating system by Rickson's Enterprises. So this, yes, is the most expensive part to our van build, but is arguably probably the most important as well. This gives us our complete heating system for hot air and hot water, and it all runs off the diesel that's already in the tank of Roamer. As you can see, it comes with a whole whack of parts inside that box. We got a coolant reservoir, we got an S-Bar diesel heater, got some heat exchangers, a fan, a pump, exhaust, a whole whack of wires to install, there's no way I could do this all in one video. So I'm going to reduce the number of parts we're going to talk about today. We're going to start off with just the parts that need to be installed underneath the van. Which leaves us with a lot less parts that's a lot more manageable for a little 15 minute video together. So if you're interested in seeing the complete heater install, make sure you hit that subscribe as well as that notification bell so it reminds you when we post the next video of this step by step van build process we're doing. We have our S-Bar Hydronic S3 diesel heater, our exhaust system, muffler, and air intake system, our 12 volt fuel pump and fuel lines. Now we also have this T-Fit connector that hooks into the auxiliary line of our diesel tank in the van, but this does not actually come with the van, or, <laughs> but this does not actually come with the kit. And the reason is, in Romer, our van already came with a unit like this that's already installed in here for engine preheating, which means it does the same task as our heater unit does, but it's for preheating the engine on very cold days, so you're not trying to start the engine when it's like minus 30, because we all know how much diesel's like that. But Mercedes only gives us one spare auxiliary fuel line out of the tank, which obviously this is hooked into. And I don't want to lose the capability of having a pre-engine warmer on our diesel van. So with this T fitting that we got, we're gonna find our fuel line and we're gonna splice this T in so we can hook up this heater right here as well as our new heater and they can both run off the same auxiliary line that's coming out of our diesel tank in Romer. So all we're gonna do is find the fuel pump that comes off that heater unit, follow that fuel line back up, which comes across and it leads us to this piece right here. And then we unhook this fuel line. Oh, I'm sure I'm probably going to get a face full of diesel here. Oh, we're good. Look at that. Ooh. And now we can splice into the diesel line. So with our T fitting, you'll see it matches what this end was. So this will just clip on to here like that. This will clip on to the flat end just like it was before. And then we're ready to hook up our rubber fuel line that came with the diesel heater that we just purchased. Wait, what? That doesn't fit. That hole is way smaller. What? Every single project, my friends. Okay, hold on, I'll be back. You see, so if you take a look at the hose that this came with and the fitting, you can see they're nowhere close to building a join together. So what we've done is we went and got some bigger hose, which is 5 16 fuel line, which now this fits into nice and tight. And then we'll have to reduce it back down so it can fit our smaller fuel line. That way, it'll still be able to hook into the fuel pump like initially anticipated. And we also had to buy some new hose clamps so they're large enough to fit over top of this larger fuel line we got. Another unexpected task, but easily fixable. Let's get back underneath that van. So now that we know that hose fits, we need the hose to go from up front of the tank here by the front tire to back here behind the fuel tank which means I want our hose to go up over top of the fuel tank. So I've taken some coat hanger. I'm just gonna stick our hose over top of the coat hanger and then tape it on so it holds it in place. And then we'll pull it through from the other side. 
Let's see, we got the coat hanger here, and hopefully this works. And look at that. We now have our hose going up over top of the fuel tank, and we can hook it up to our piece that we have. That's what we call thinking with your dipstick, Jimmy. Look at that, it fits up there nice and tight, my friends. So I am gonna strap this to here. Now we're ready to move to the back of the tank. See, now we have the hose coming out the back side of the fuel tank. And now we're ready to hook up the fuel pump. So this here is the 12 volt fuel pump that comes with the kit. Now this is a little deceiving when you look at the instructions because if you look at this image here, it shows the plug towards the actual diesel heater itself. But on the second page, it says note the electrical plug on the S3 fuel pump is now on the input side. But doesn't really clarify anything for you here. But on the fuel pump itself, I don't know if you guys will actually be able to read this. Come on, come on. See, there, now you can see it. So you can see there's a fuel mark here that has an arrow, which tells me that the fuel should come in this side and go that side. I mean, this is the tank, this is the heater. So it's opposite of what the actual picture on the instructions show. Now this does have to be at a 15 degree angle and it comes with its own bracket that is just going to slide right over top here. Not easily mind you. And it's just like that. There's our fuel pump assembled and this plug here will just plug straight into our wiring harness once we get all set up. So now we can take it back underneath the van. So our fuel pump is going to get mounted right in this little nook here beside our fuel tank and behind our water tank. That way it can hang down and be a little bit protected because these do vibrate so you don't want it, the, the pump itself to touch the chassis or else you get a big vibration noise from the research I've done. As well as they want this pump to be as close to your inlet of the fuel tank as possible and they say no longer than two meters. So right at this point, two meters is about six and a half feet. And right at this point here, we're just at the five foot mark of line, which means we should be just fine. So when mounting this fuel pump, it does come with a screw for it. And we already have a pre-drilled hole in the frame of the van. But unfortunately, this screw is just a little bit too small and won't actually hold. So we're gonna do the same thing we always do. We're gonna drill it out a little bit. Dead battery. <laughs> we'll prime it and we'll install a riv nut. Then we install the fuel pump. Pretty straightforward stuff. Now, this fuel pump, as mentioned before, does need to sit at like a 15 to 30 degree angle, and you want the inlet to be down because if not, there's a filter back in here and it'll create an air bubble if you put it that way. It's kind of an approximation, obviously. And then boom, she's in place. So as mentioned earlier, we did make this a bigger line to fit that T. So we're gonna cut our hose. We gotta downsize it to the same size as the fuel pump now. And just like that, we now have our fuel pump hooked into our fuel tank of the van. So now it's time to install the heater. Which is our S-Bar Hydronic S3 diesel heater. So this is a five kilowatt heater that is pretty unique because of the fact that it heats coolant and we transfer the energy from the coolant to make our hot water and our hot air. As well is that this is the item that ignites and it mounts underneath the van. Meaning for our hot water and our hot air, there's nothing that ignites inside the van meaning zero chance of any type of gas poisoning inside the vent. You got two outlets in the bottom. One is for the exhaust, the other one's for the air intake. You also have your fuel line, your two mounts for your electrical plugs. And on the top, you have your in for your coolant and your out for coolant. And you're just gonna feed those right through the floor of the vent. So to mount this thing to the bottom or underneath our van, it comes with this bracket. This is gonna get mounted to the van and then with the clips, 
it clips into the top. You'll see there's grooves up there. Clips into the top, and then you put a bolt right into the bottom, and that's how it's all gonna mount up underneath our van. Now when you get your diesel heater, you'll see it has a bunch of mounting holes already made in it, but none of them actually have threads in them yet. So you will have to tap these holes so you can get your bolt to fit into there. And for myself, I couldn't actually figure out what the thread size was on the bolt that came with it. It didn't match any of the ones inside my tap set. So I'm gonna use a quarter 20 bolt that we already have and just tap the threads for that. And now it threads in perfectly. With this all together, oh shoot, hold on a sec. So now, with this all together, with the bracket on, I didn't actually bolt it. We're just gonna place this up where we want it so that we know it's gonna fit in there as well as have room for our exhaust and our coolant lines to be able to escape and go where they need to go. Once I know I got it in the right spot, just kind of remove it, leaving the clamp there, and then we'll mark our spots, which we've already done. So now we'll just drill them out and put riv nuts in so it looks like this. And now we're ready to put our mounting bracket on. Now, yes, I was only able to get three in because this weird little cap thing, but with all three of those in place, I'm positive we'll have no issues. This furnace is quite light anyways. So I'm sure those three points will be more than enough for what we're doing. And now, our furnace is ready to clip into place. No hands, see? But now I gotta figure out from this here, these are our coolant lines, they now have to go up through our floor. Now our heater does come with two heater lines that'll hook right into that heater and go straight up. But as I mentioned, that our hose has to go up through the floor of our van. A Couple options that I've seen during my research, we're just running the hose straight up through the floor, but I'm afraid of chafing and I couldn't really find a proper gasket to fit around there so that I knew that this hose wasn't gonna wear out. I did also find a custom made bulkhead fitting that looks like this, but they want like five or six hundred dollars for this stupid thing, American. There's no way I was gonna pay that much for a simple fitting going through my floor. So we had to get a little creative and we built something like this, which it has a bulkhead fitting and then a three quarter inch fitting so our hose can go onto this side. The coolant will run through the fitting, through the floor, and up to the other side. So this bulkhead fitting that we made breaks into four simple little pieces. We have the actual bulkhead itself that mounts to the floor. We have two three quarter inch barb fittings that our hose will fit onto, and an adapter so that we can go from the JCI male like this to a GC, JCI female so they all go together. The cool part about JCI fittings like this is there's no need for silicone tape because when they fit together, You'll see they seal like that, and then when you tighten this down, you have no worries of anything leaking. So really quick, let me grab a piece of wood, and we'll pretend this is the floor of the van. I can show you much easier than trying to do it while we're underneath there in the freezing cold. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take an inch and an eighth hole saw, drill a hole through the floor of the van, then we'll take our bulkhead fitting, it feeds up through the bottom of the hole, gets bolted down from the top, that gives us a solid fitting, top and bottom, to mount to. And on the bottom, we just simply thread on our three quarter inch barb fitting and we're ready for a hose. On the top side, we'll take our JCI adapter fitting, thread that down on, and now it's ready for our three quarter inch barb fitting on the top of that. We now have a fitting that goes through our floor in which the hose can hook down here to where the heater is that we just installed and the hose can hook on up here to go to all our accessories up top that need to use the coolant for the heat. Pretty straightforward stuff. Took me days to find out a plan for this. For you guys, like two minutes. What? Let's go to the van. I'll show you what it looks like when it's all finished now. So from inside the van, so you can see where our fittings come up through the floor. We just cut the floor out. So we're able to tighten everything down. Just go straight at the top and just enough room so we'll be able to hook our hose on and go to all our appliances that'll be inside of here for them. And then down underneath the van, you can see where our fittings come down through the floor and we've hooked up our antifreeze lines straight to where our furnace is hooked in. We got it all tight and locked in place now. So now the only thing we have left is the air filter and the exhaust and we're done this part of the job, my friends. 
So the air intake line you will see has an air filter on one side and the other side just mounts straight to the furnace. Now on these two outputs I showed you, they are different sizes, so it's impossible to get it wrong. So what we want is we want the air filter to be able to sit right up inside here. So the air input will be against this bar. So what we've done is I've taken a couple of our clamps and I just self tapped them into the bottom of the floor. We'll put zip ties through on both of them. And then on the filter itself, it has these hard ridges on both sides. So I've lined those clamps up. So when I put this in place, it holds that filter piece up perfectly and nothing's actually gonna get squished. So now all I gotta do is run this across, get the correct length, and we can literally just cut this stuff with those Fisker scissors we have. These things, I gotta say, have become absolutely amazing. And you'll see it actually just fits in place really that simple not sure yeah and then you can see where we've mounted it on so now we have our fuel line which comes from our fuel pump you'll see it runs across all the way through around and it ends right here now i'm not actually going to hook the fuel line up to this yet once we get power to it we are going to have to purge it which means it'll have to be unplugged to do that so we'll do that once we get to the wiring and all that kind of good stuff but now I need to hook the exhaust up, which is this last port right here. So this is a full exhaust and muffler system. The kit does come with all the clamps for it. So I've just gone ahead and installed it because it's really hard to show you. It plugs into the diesel heater and it comes down underneath the frame here. Nothing actually touches to the muffler itself, which we made a custom bracket to fit it all in. And then the tip just comes right down and exits down underneath by the rear tire. And after all that's said and done, you'll see, I did put a hole here with a grommet. That's for our wiring harness. It needs to come down and plug into here, as well as into our fuel pump back there. But that's gonna be another project on another video, because right now, we are completely out of time, my friends. So if you have made it this far, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button. If you have subscribed, thank you, thank you, thank you. Maybe consider hitting the bell. And of course we, we will see you on the next video. Perfect.